Okay, so in this video, we will consider another subtle choice of a U substitution. But first, let's begin with a simple, now definite, integral. So suppose we ask to integrate from 1 to 6, 5x minus 4 over the square root of x dx. Well, this is pretty straightforward, right? Replace root of x by a power of 1 half. And now if we divide through both 5x and 4 by x to the 1 half, we will be able to use the power of rule and then simply evaluate with the fundamental theorem of calculus. So x over x to the 1 half, well, x is x to the 1, 1 minus a half is a half, so it gives us 5x to the 1 half, minus 4, 1 over x to the 1 half, bringing x up is of course negative 1 half. Now we can use the power rule. 5 is a constant multiple, so it stays there. 1 half plus 1 is 3 half, divide by 3 half, minus 4, constant multiple stays there negative a half plus one is positive a half divided by the new power one half that's the antiderivative and we must evaluate this at both endpoints and subtract therefore using the fundamental theorem of calculus before though we'll simplify a little bit divide by three half multiply by two thirds so you get ten over three so ten over three x to the 3 half minus divide by a half multiply by 2 so you get minus 8 x to the 1 half from 1 to 6 here you could simplify a little bit factoring a square root of x and a 2 I won't bother I'll just plug it in because we won't have a nice value as root of 6 is irrational anyway so I'll just leave it as, we'll now evaluate this at 6. So we have 10 over 3, 6 to the 3 half, minus 8, 6 to the 1 half, or if you prefer, square root of 6, minus the antiderivative at 1. This will be simpler. 1 to any power is 1, so all you have is 10 over 3, minus 8. Just be careful that when you subtract, you subtract the entire expression, so put your parentheses. And I'll leave the simplification up to you at this point, nothing very interesting. Now let's tweak our integral a little bit. What if we replace, so we keep everything else the same, 1 to 6, 5x minus 4, dx, but to replace now root of x by root of x plus 3. Will this make a difference, and if so, will it be interesting? So we want to integrate from 1 to 6, 5x minus 4, over the square root of a sum of two terms, not just x, but x plus 3 dx. Is this more interesting, and if so, why? Well, if you remember the previous integral, it was just root of x, the root of a single term and not a sum of two terms. Then we could simply divide through each term by root of x, power rule, and we were basically done. But because of the plus 3 here, we can't divide x by root of x plus 3 and 4 over this and use the power rule. We're stuck. So once again, we face a problem we've seen before. We'd like to replace the sum of two terms, x plus 3, as a single term. So we make a u substitution. We give x plus 3 a new name. We call it simply u. Well, we'll need to find our dx as a function of u. Well, u is a function of x, so differentiate u with respect to x. But the derivative of x plus 3 with respect to x is simply 1. Multiply by dx, and quite simply, du 
equals the x, or if you prefer, the x is the u. Well, we'll also need to change our bounds of integration, right? This is saying x equals 1, x equals 6. What are the corresponding values of u? Well, use x plus 3 for any x, so if x is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, so u is 4. If x is 6, u is 6 plus 3, which is 9. And then we have our new bounds of integration. One last observation is we'll need to replace this x as a function of u. Well, if u is x plus 3, subtract 3, and you'll find that u minus 3 is simply x. And now we have everything we need to replace the integral in terms of x to an integral in terms of u. Bounds of integration, 1 becomes 4, 6 becomes 9, as we are now going to be with respect to u and not with respect to x. Okay, over the root of x plus 3, well, if u is x plus 3, root of u is root of x plus 3. But I won't write root of u, I'll write instead u to the 1 half. Check. Then we have 5 times x. And we have to replace x as a function of u, and we have just done so before, x is u minus 3. 5 times u minus 3. And be careful that all of u minus 3 is multiplied by 5, not just the u. Minus 4 is a constant, it stays minus 4. And the x is just the u. So everything in terms of x we replaced in terms of u. Now we're good to go. We'll never have to go back in terms of x. We'll just evaluate this. And if you see, the problem has disappeared. We are no longer dividing by the square root of a sum of two terms, but just the square root of one variable. So we'll be able here to divide through and use the power rule on each term. If you multiply out, you'll have 5u on top, minus 15, minus 4, minus 19. over e to the one-half du. Now we can divide through u over e to the one-half is e to the one-half minus 19 1 over e to the one-half is e to the negative one-half and now we can simply use the power rule on each term. 5, 1 half plus 1 is 3 half, divide by 3 half, minus 19 constant multiple, negative a half plus 1 is 1 half, over 1 half, and we must evaluate our antiderivative from u equals 4 to u equals 9. Well, let's simplify this a little bit. And here, because we have square roots, and both 9 and 4 are perfect squares, we will simplify. So, <coughs> if you divide by 3 half, you multiply by 2 thirds. So you'll have 5 times 2 thirds, u to the 3 half, minus, divide by 1 half, multiply by 2, 2 times 19, u to the 1 half, from, as before, 4 to 9. Before we plug it in, we will factor and try and make our calculations a little simpler. Well, there's a common factor of 2, and there's a u to the 1 half being the smaller power. Let's factor it, and we'll just write this as root of u. If you factor it, it's gone. If you take a half away from 3 half, that leaves you with 2 over 2, which is 1, and that leaves you with u. So all you're left with is 
five thirds u. minus 19. And we evaluate from 4 to 9. Now we'll plug it in and simplify. So we plug in u equals 9 we'll get, well, the root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, so we get 6 times 5 times 9 over 3, but 9 over 3 is just 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 19 is negative 4. So that's our antiderivative at 9, minus, here open your brackets, the antiderivative at 4. Root of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so it's 4 times. Now here, it won't simplify as nicely, but we'll have 5 times 4, 20 over 3. So that's 20 over 3, minus 19. Let's clean this up, and then we'll be able to simplify. 6 times negative 4, or actually, we can do simpler, as both end up being multiplied by 4. We can factor 4. So we'll have 4. If you factor 4, we're left with what? Well, negative 6, negative well, we want this to be over 3, so we can simplify. Don't forget your bracket. So we have 20 over 3. Now 3 times 19, 30 plus 27, 57. Twenty minus thirty-seven minus fifty-seven is negative thirty-seven, but we have negative negative, so it's positive thirty-seven over three. We want a single fraction, so multiply by three over three. You get four times negative eighteen over three, so negative eighteen plus thirty-seven over three equals 4 times, well, negative 18 plus 37 is negative 19, so negative 19 over 3. Whoops, sorry. Not negative, but positive 19, right? Negative 18 plus 37 is positive 19. And finally, we can multiply 19 by 4, 4 times 10 gives you 40, 4 times 6, 30, 4 times 9, sorry, 36, so that's 76 over 3. And there you go. That's our final answer. Now, all of this was rather boring. It was just straightforward calculations. But ultimately, the idea was, if you divide by a square root like this, and there's a sum of two terms, the only way you'll be able to divide through and then use the power rule is if you make the sum of these two terms into a single variable. And the rest was really just algebraic manipulations. The integration was very simple, and really all of this was just crunching out the final simplified answer. So that's it.